following program is sponsored by CBN. Coming up, now that Trump is gone, what's the left's next step? The target shifted. It went from Donald Trump to you. Deprogramming millions of Americans. That's much more than sinister. That's much more than uh, just media bias. Plus, a baseball hero who played for the love of the game when the game didn't love him back. Without faith, I would have given up. Living legend Sam Allen shares his story. Baseball is my game, and I love it. On today's 700 Club. Well, welcome to the 700 Club. If you've gotten Super Bowl fatigue, you're not alone. There are millions of others who watch that interesting game. And so Tom Brady, 43 years old, set a record. It's unbelievable. And, uh, well, our hats are off to a great athlete. Who's, and he says he'll be back. He's not ready to oh, retire. Oh, man, man. <laughs> well, he's, he's unbelievable. But uh, it was quite a game. Well... Guess this. How much is he going to take to bankrupt America? Well, try this one. $3,600 per year. $3,600 per year for millions of families. That's what the Democrats are now proposing as part of a $1.9 trillion bill. Vaccine distribution is up and COVID cases are down. So why do we need such a costly relief plan? And could this plan bank Corrupt the entire country. Dale Hurd has that. With COVID cases and deaths reported to be on the decline and the economy on the upswing, Democrats still want to pass a $1.9 trillion COVID relief bill. Democrats today plan to propose sending millions of American families up to $3,600 per year for every child under the age of six. The payments going to individual parents making $75,000 a year or less or couples earning $150,000 a year or less. As to those $1,400 stimulus checks, Congress and the administration are negotiating the income limits on who should get them. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen says too many people are still hurting. We need a package that's big enough to address this full range of needs. But this latest COVID relief plan would add dramatically to this year's federal budget, pumping it up to $6 trillion, $4 trillion of which would be debt. It took the country 200 years to rack up uh, $4 trillion in debt, and we're going to do it in one year. The unemployment rate fell again. Uh, we're starting to see the states open up. We're seeing the vaccine get out there. We do not need to bankrupt our country to get the economy moving again. Republican Senator Pat Toomey says about $1 trillion of previous aid hasn't even been distributed yet, and that along with the strength of the U.S. economy makes the relief package inappropriate. It's not an economy in collapse the way it was in March. It's not the right solution. Meanwhile, daily coronavirus cases, hospitalizations and deaths are all trending down. And vaccine distribution is slowly picking up. Almost 10% of Americans have now received at least the first dose. However, a new study suggests the cases of the highly contagious UK variant are potentially doubling every 10 days. It does show that we have likely more of the variants floating around in our population. That could explain why we may still see some more surges in the future. And for kids suffering under school closures, the CDC is expected to release Wednesday official guidance on reopening schools. Dale Hurd, CBN News. Unbelievable. How can they even think of something as insane as that? Is it somehow in order to bankrupt America, then they can come out and have a new uh, uh, era where the United States is taken over by uh, socialists. I, I don't understand what the, what the game plan is, but spending us into bankruptcy is not the way to, to make anybody happy. Well, in other news, unconstitutional and a waste of time. That's what most Republicans are calling the in, upcoming impeachment trial of the president. John Jessup has more of that. 
That's right, Pat. Former President Trump's Senate impeachment trial is set to begin tomorrow. Both sides, both the House impeachment managers and Trump's legal team, are hoping to finish up in a hurry. Even though Democrats want to get on with approving President Biden's nominees and passing legislation on his 100-day agenda, they're determined to hold a trial. Most Republicans, and Pat said, are calling it unconstitutional and a waste of time. The president was taking steps to make it worse, not better. We're going to do our constitutional responsibility and hold a trial. 45 plus Republicans are going to vote early on that it's unconstitutional. It's not a question of how the trial ends. It's a question of when it ends. The president is accused of incitement to insurrection in the January 6th attack on the Capitol. House managers are expected to call a few witnesses and rely on videos from that day. President Trump has declined to testify. Well, turning now to the Iran nuclear crisis, the Islamic Republic recently revealed that it's enriching uranium to weapons grade levels, a violation of international agreements. The Trump administration pulled out of President Obama's international nuclear deal with Iran and imposed heavy economic sanctions on the regime. President Biden wants to restart the deal, but Iran is demanding the U.S. lift those sanctions before it returns to the negotiating table. The president told CBS News he won't compromise on Iran's enrichment program. Will the U.S. lift sanctions first in order to get Iran back to the negotiating table? No. They have to stop enriching uranium first. Iran claims its nuclear program is peaceful. Well, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu pled not guilty today as his trial on corruption charges resumed just weeks before national elections. Netanyahu is accused of accepting lavish gifts from wealthy friends and offering favors to powerful media moguls in exchange for favorable coverage of him and his family. Netanyahu dismissed the charges against him as a witch hunt and orchestrated by biased law enforcement and media. Pat? You know, that's again one of those things you see zealous prosecutors are just going over the, uh, you know, the limit of what their authority is. I mean, wh what did he do? What's the claim? Well, they, they gave him a nice story in one of the TV shows. Uh, they, they, they gave him favorable coverage in a TV show. And along the way, they maybe they got a tax deal. Uh, maybe, maybe not. Maybe he wasn't able to do that. That's what the trial is all about. I mean, this, this happens in the United States all the time. I mean, the politicians are always looking for a break, trying to get somebody to say something nice about them. And, and it's just incredible that in Israel they want to uh, go after one of the greatest prime ministers they've ever had. Well, he'll win this one, but uh, it, it hadn't helped one of our great allies. John? Pat, staying on the topic of Israel, Israel slammed a decision by the International Criminal Court that it now has jurisdiction to investigate war crimes against the Jewish state. As CBN's Chris Mitchell reports from Jerusalem, the landmark decision could put Israel on the defensive against potential war crime charges by the United Nations Court. The impact could be widespread, as the ruling includes Israelis who were involved in events ranging from Israel's 2014 war with Hamas to Palestinian mass demonstrations along the Gaza-Israeli border beginning in 2018. That would mean Israeli politicians, Israeli leaders, Israeli officials, and most of all, of course, Israeli military members, basically for any acts which are alleged to be criminal that have been committed since July 2014. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu blasted the decision. When the ICC investigates Israel for fake war crimes, this is pure anti-Semitism. The court established to prevent atrocities like the Nazi Holocaust against the Jewish people is now targeting the one state of the Jewish people. First, it outrageously claims that when Jews live in our homeland, this is a war crime. Second, it claims that when democratic Israel defends itself against terrorists who murder our children, rocket our cities, we're committing another war crime. Israel says for years Hamas has fired thousands of rockets indiscriminately into civilian areas, while they respond with targeted military responses. Hamas is also open to ICC investigations 
but they applauded the move. Hamas considers this an important step towards justice for our Palestinian people and prosecute the Israeli war criminals. The most important steps remain, taking practical measures on the ground to hold the Israeli war criminals accountable and punish them for their crimes and everything they have done against our unarmed people. It could also mean Jewish communities in Israel's biblical heartland, also known as the West Bank, might be considered illegal, since the ICC calls this area occupied territory. It could put Israeli leaders and possibly civilians traveling to countries bound by the ICC treaty in danger. Because they will be obliged by the treaty holding the ICC together to extradite suspects of the ICC to The Hague for interrogation, arrest, trial or whatever may be. The two to one decision is not the final step. The matter now shifts to the ICC's chief prosecutor for a final decision to see if war crimes will be charged. Chris Mitchell, CBN News, Jerusalem. Thanks, Chris. Pat, back to you. Well, you know, Jay Sekulow was defending a case for the United States. We just said, we're not subject to this ICC. We will not accept it, period. Well, the United States is big enough to enforce it because they, they say, well, how are we going to enforce it? Well, come get us. Just give it a try if you think you're, you're, you're strong enough. Well, of course, they can't. Israel is much smaller. It's a different deal. But I think the same thing is true. They say we're not subject to this jurisdiction. We not, will not accept such a thing. This is outrageous. But these people are, are using this war crimes business to stigmatize uh, honest dissent and honest people. And the United States, as they, Jay, Jay Sekulow led the charge, said, we're not going to be subject to you, period. End of story. And I think the Israelis need to do the same thing. This is a, a kangaroo court. We're not going to accept it. John? Pat, another Super Bowl win and another Super Bowl MVP award for Tom Brady. This time as the quarterback of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers as they beat the defending champs, the Kansas City Chiefs, 31-9. Brady completed 21 of 29 passes for 201 yards and three touchdowns, two of them to his old New England teammate, Rob Gronkowski. The game was played on the Bucks' home field in Tampa Bay. Even though this was his 10th Super Bowl, Brady says he's not even thinking of retiring. Congrats, congrats to Tampa Bay. And Pat, you got to give it up to Tom Brady. I cannot believe it. 43 years old, they call him the, the goat, the old goat. I mean, that, uh, I, I don't really, th I mean, today's world think 43 is very old, but he just keeps on going. And, and the line that they put together, the coaching in that the Tampa Bay Bucks. I think the owner of the thing was when they put him on, it was sort of surprised, like, I, I don't know what we've done, but here we are. And, uh, but they have huge linemen. They, they had a tremendous game. And the big problem was with Mahomes, who's one of the great football players, you know, he had had a concussion and was cleared to play. Uh, he had a toe injury, and that may have affected him, but uh, he just wasn't hitting his passes like uh, he had in the past. But yet, at the same time, all of his uh, receivers were covered thoroughly by the uh, defense of the Buccaneers. and. Uh, uh, it was just amazing. But Mahomes is one of the great players. He was the MVP of last year, and here he hardly got off the ground. But it was an amazing Super Bowl. But, you know, I, I, I frankly think some of the league playoff games are a lot more exciting than the Super Bowl. Uh, you know, with that injury that he had had, he, he took a couple of shots to the neck and head yesterday oh, that time. were... He, 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 you wonder, I mean, the poor, I mean they, they didn't... I mean, as a matter of fact... Uh, um, the the uh, Tampa Bay people were called for uh, roughing the quarterback, and they 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 hurt him badly. But I mean, uh, well, he can recover. He's a nice guy, and I'm I'm sorry to see that happen to him. But uh, he's very young. Brady's <laughs> unbelievable. All right. He'll have many more years, right? Yeah. Well, still ahead, a fascinating story ripped from the pages of Black history, and 100 years in the making. Who is this living legend and what role did he play in the struggle for civil rights? Plus, the chilling call to deprogram Trump supporters. What's really behind this outrageous idea targeting millions of Americans? See for yourself after this.
shades of George Orwell's 1984. They're calling for deprogramming Trump supporters. This outrageous cry from the left has enraged millions of Americans. President Trump is, of course, out of office. The Democrats control the White House and both houses of Congress. Well, so why are Trump supporters being targeted? Jennifer Wishan has this amazing story. It's no secret Americans who supported the presidency of Donald Trump mystify those known as the liberal media elite. Still, many Americans gasped when a trusted news voice millions used to wake up to made this statement. The question is, how are we going to really almost deprogram these people who have signed up for the cult of Trump? For many citizens, it was jaw-dropping to hear something so radical from a respected journalist. What did you think when you heard her calling for Trump supporters to be deprogrammed? You kind of get that sinking feeling in your stomach because it's so disappointing. You're like, oh, wow, seriously? It's a year since Fox Nation last visited the border. Longtime journalist and former 60 Minutes correspondent Lara Logan, who now hosts her own show on Fox Nation, Lara Logan has no agenda, says this so-called idea is more widely accepted than you might think. Just the idea that anyone needs to be deprogrammed is such a radical idea. And yet it is, this is not an idea that you're hearing on the fringes, right? This is an idea that's being published in the opinion pages of the Washington Post. She's right. This comes from Post opinion writer Brian Klass. So do we have any hope of deprogramming the millions of Americans who are devoted to dangerous lunacy? Don't hold your breath. One in a slew of articles and commentary that accept deprogramming as a necessary response to Americans disappointed by the presidential election. There are millions of Americans, um, uh, almost all white, almost all Republicans, who somehow need to be deprogrammed. They're, it, it, it's as if they, don't, they, they, they are members of a cult, the Trumpist cult. Logan points out she's not motivated by politics or party, rather outrage over the media's self-sustaining sinister narrative that in some cases threatens the very lives and livelihoods of millions of citizens. There is an entire infrastructure that is built around sustaining this narrative and targeting millions of people in this country who see the world differently and who they regard as a threat and now as illegitimate enough to have to be erased. Hunter Biden's laptop was a conspiracy theory until it wasn't. And Russia collusion was never ever uh, cast as a conspiracy theory, but it wasn't true. And how damaging was that? What about the fact that Stephen Scalise was shot by a Bernie Sanders supporter? What is it that Bernie Sanders supporters uh, believed that justified picking up a weapon and going and trying to kill someone? I mean, that's much more than sinister. That's much more than uh, just media bias. There are actual political operatives who um, are being paid and who have placement and access throughout the media who are making sure that these narratives are sustained. What is this? Is this just about Donald Trump or is this just about conservatism? What do you think? This was never about Donald Trump. And that's what made Donald Trump so threatening to all the people that really, really, really went out of their way to destroy him and to get rid of him. It was all about focusing everybody on the man so that you wouldn't remember to focus on the principles, so that you wouldn't realize that what actually happened for the first time in living memory is that we, the people, as it is in the Constitution, actually said, okay, we're gonna exercise our rights. We've had it, we're done. We're done with you saying things can only be done this way in Washington. We're done with you taking our tax dollars and then telling us that you know best we're done with paying for NATO and then being uh, disregarded and criticized and blamed for everything by the international community. Fine, we won't, we won't pay your defense bills then. We don't understand why you agreed to this trade deal with China that destroyed manufacturing in this country. We don't understand why uh, you still are part of the United Nations when everyone at the UN says that um, America's you know, to blame for everything. And what 
what the propaganda was all about, what the targeting of Donald Trump and the emphasizing of, you know, every annoying thing about him that got emphasized over and over and over and over again was shaming you into not voting for him or admitting that you vote for him and um, and distracting you from the real principles at stake so that that he would be limited in what he'd be able to achieve and that he could quickly be gotten rid of as fast as possible. And how do you know that's true? Because you don't have to take my word for it. What do I know? I'm just a journalist. Well, you know it's true because look what happened even before he left office. The target shifted. It went from Donald Trump to you. It's a chilling assessment. One Logan says is being backed up with action. Just look at the Department of Homeland Security's new domestic terrorism bulletin, warning of ideologically motivated violent extremists here at home. People the former CIA director calls a greater threat than Al Qaeda. This threat from domestic violence extremists is much more challenging, I believe, than it was in terms of going after foreign terrorists. Have we really forgotten what 9-11 was like? That you're treating January 6th like 9-11? And she warns the media might not realize what it's ultimately sacrificing. So right now it's it's reprogramming or deprogramming Trump supporters. What, what about when it's deprogramming Christians of all kinds, including left and right? People think, well, I'm I'm a better person than a Trump supporter, right? Because I believe I've studied critical race theory and I voted for Joe Biden and I would never vote for Donald Trump or a, or a horrible, nasty Republican, right? Except uh, you go to church and God and religion is a threat to progressive secular movement in this country. And uh, now you need to be deprogrammed. And who's next? Who else is on the list? For Logan, who's a native of South Africa, that's a question she tells me she never, ever thought she'd be asking about the United States of America. Jennifer Wishon, CBN News. You know, I hate to tell you, but that's the way the Nazis began to work against the Jews. They, they first, you know, began to spread these rumors, you know, the secret protocols of the elders of Zion. And then they began to talk more and more about the fact that the Jews were sucking the lifeblood out of the economy. And then they went after the next thing and then the next thing. And it wasn't long before they were rounding up the Jewish people and, and the, oh, they, the Holocaust came. And the next thing you know, there was a terrible war that will cost 50 million lives. This kind of stuff can spread like a, like a virus, and we cannot permit it in America. We, we just cannot. I mean, this is a land of freedom, and we, we hold different views. And you, you, somebody across the street may dis, di, uh, differ with you. He may be a Republican. He may be a Democrat. He may be a Libertarian. He may be a Socialist, whatever he is. But he's entitled to his uh, or he or her to their opinion. There's no question. That's what freedom is all about. And it was Oliver Wendell Holmes said the best test of truth is in the marketplace. So let's, let's bring it out and let's discuss it. But let's not categorize and stigmatize those that hold different views than we do. Because this is dangerous. And when it ha But to see it happening, they're talking about deprogramming people who voted for Trump. 44 million people have to, in America, half of the population, have to be deprogrammed. Come on, Terry. Well, coming up, we've got your email. Amber asks, is it okay for a woman to watch porn if she's unlovable? Your questions and honest answers right around the corner. Plus, Meet a living legend. What was the greatest thrill of this ball player's life? And why was he given the title of Major League Baseball player 60 years after he left the game? He'll tell you himself after this. It's about time. That's what Sam Allen said when he finally received the title of Major League Baseball player last December. That title was more than 60 years in coming. Sam played professional baseball for four seasons, leading the Negro League in runs in 1957. What were those days like for this living legend? See for yourself. Your attention, 
It was 1947 when Jackie Robinson broke the color barrier in baseball by joining the Brooklyn Dodgers. For an 11-year-old Sam Allen. That was the greatest thing that ever happened. It gave us a hero. Everybody wanted to be a baseball player. And I knew then that I wanted to be a baseball player. Born in 1936, Sam grew up in a tight-knit family with his mom and grandparents in their hometown of Norfolk, Virginia. His love of baseball started with his grandfather. At that time, teams and spectators were segregated. The blacks had to go in the side gate down the left field line, and the black grandstand was next to the white bleachers. But we go every night because it was cheap. By the time Sam was six, he had picked up on all the rules and signals. Before long, he was playing baseball with his friends. I broke a few wonder panes. My grandfather had to pay for them, but I fell in love with baseball. It gave me something to look forward to. Sam was becoming a star at Booker T. Washington High School in Norfolk, not only in baseball, but football as well. When we used to play football, you could hear the mic in the neighborhood. And my grandmother would uh, be listening and she would hear her say, Allen running the ball for Booker T, Allen making the tackle for Booker T, Allen kicking off for Booker T. See, all I hear was Allen, Allen, Allen. <laughs> After graduating, Sam was invited to try out for the Cincinnati Reds minor league team, but didn't make the cut. I almost cried, but I did cry. Because, you know, I'd never been cut before from the team. All the teams that I ever tried out for, I made them. One thing helped him press on, his faith in God. Without faith, I would have given up. I had all the reason to really give up. A lot of the players that were cut down there didn't play anymore. But I stuck with it. Soon after, an agent invited the now 21-year-old to try out for the Kansas City Monarchs, a Negro League team who were training in Jacksonville, Florida at the time. Taking a step of faith, Sam bought a one-way bus ticket to Jacksonville. I didn't have money to get back. I just had enough to get down there. So I don't have any way to get back home. So I got to, I got to make the team. Sam's big chance came playing against the Monarchs. The stands were packed that day, and a team from Jacksonville showed up with only four players. Not wanting to disappoint the fans and lose money, the Monarchs manager told Sam and a few others to dress up for the other team. The first time up, I got a hit. Next time I struck out, and I said, look, I got to be better than this, so the next time I hit the ball over the scoreboard. Signed on the spot as an outfielder by the Monarchs, Sam became a proud member of the Negro Leagues. I think contract about $150, but I was so happy. I didn't know what to do because I didn't have any money. Now I got a contract, and I'm going to get $2 a day meal, too. The Negro Leagues were formed in 1920. Despite their talents, black players weren't allowed to play alongside whites in the segregated major and minor leagues. By the time Sam joined in the late 50s, the Negro Leagues were well established. The Negro League was drawing 20, 30, 35, 40,000. And at that time, we were equal to the Major League Baseball. White and black went to the game because people love baseball. Sam played professional ball for four seasons, moving from the Monarchs to the Raleigh Tigers to the Memphis Red Sox. Talented in the field and at bat, he led the league in runs in 1957. Sam says despite the low pay, he loved pro ball and the other benefits that came with it. The greatest thrill that I got out of playing baseball was, believe it or not, when I would come home, the ladies in the neighborhood would be talking. And they'd say, that's Bernice's boy. He played baseball. And say, yeah, your mama proud of you. And that made me feel good, you know. Yeah, that made me feel good. However, on the road from town to town was a different story, as the team faced racism constantly. Some places you had the restaurant where you had to eat in the kitchen, see? And in the kitchen, they had a fish box that had a piece of plywood on. Yeah, that you, they would feed you in the kitchen. Sam says it was his faith in God that kept him grounded, 
and his mother's example of godly character that kept him from becoming bitter. My mother was a loving person. My mother was uh, the reason that I am the way I am. I'm about helping people, that's my thing. Because they always say, let, let the works I've done speak for me. In 1960, Sam's dream of making the majors got put on hold when he was drafted into the Army at 24 and became a paratrooper with the 82nd Airborne. He served two years before moving back to Norfolk, where he got married and started a family. He kept up with baseball, playing and coaching for fun, and watching his hometown team, the Norfolk Tides. Baseball is my game, and, and I love it. I gave it 100%. That's all. I did the best I could. And Sam's legend lives on. They got my picture. Where is it? Over here, right over here on the wall. A whole lot of people don't have pictures on the wall now. You know, when you come in a ballpark and you see that, that means a whole lot. Then, in December 2020, Sam and hundreds of his teammates and opponents would finally hold the title of Major League Baseball player. 100 years after its formation, the Negro Leagues were recognized as Major League by the MLB. It's about time, you know, because we've been coming for many years, you know, hundreds of years, so we, 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 we're getting there. Sam says that while sports will continue to play a part in bringing Americans together, it's prayer that will bring healing among all the races. We got to do a lot of praying. It's been divided. We need each other. Blacks, whites, we need everybody to defend this country. Boy, Sam's got it right, doesn't he? And how wonderful that he has received such accolades for such an amazing yeah. career. Wow. The little local boy here. That's the great yeah, he's a good guy. That he's not bitter, yeah, that's, <laughs> having that's seen the amazing so much. Thing. Wow. You know, the, it's amazing that people still kept their, their kindness and sweetness because yeah. the discrimination it was just so horrible. And it wasn't too long ago, I was, you know, when we were starting out here, and I, I, I felt it very keenly because it was so prevalent. Yeah. Yeah, we've changed a long way, so all right. Well, Sam, well done. Well done. Time for some questions well, and let's answers. Go for you ready? Okay. Okay. This first one is Amber, who says, "Is it okay for a woman to watch porn if she's unlovable? I've never been with a man sexually. I'm 26 years old, sexually rejected. Honestly, I never thought I was attractive or beautiful or wanted. I'm tired of waking up and seeing myself. I'm tired, Pat." <laughs> well, first of all, I want to tell you, Amber, you're not unlovable. God looks at you and he sees something absolutely beautiful. He sees what you can be in Christ. And I think you, you need to uh, improve your own self-image. You say, is it all right to watch porn? Well, uh, you know, porn is, a, is well, the, if for a man, you know, to, to look at that kind of stuff and to, uh, you know, you can commit adultery in your mind. And I think, that, you know, porn is... The women are, you know, they're enhanced. The whole thing is a setup, and all of that stuff is phony. And why would you want to get involved in something that's phony? You need to turn to the Lord and let, let God love you. And you know, there might just be somebody out there that God has for you. She's only 26. Yeah, you know, there are a lot of people in this world, and and the, you say I'm I'm not lovely. But what you need to do is. When you think of yourself, I am beautiful in Christ. I have the love of the Lord in me. And that thing will radiate. You never can tell. There might be some young man, or I don't know how old you are, maybe a middle-aged man. 26 years 26 old. 26 yeah. years old, who would say, well, you're just exactly the, the mate that God has mm -hmm. planned for me. I'm looking for somebody who loves the Lord, and you're it. All right? This is Arlen, who says, what does it mean to be convicted by the Holy Spirit? Would you illustrate by some example? Well, uh, to be convicted is, is the same thing as, as feeling sorry for sin. You know, what, what, what does it mean to be convicted? Well, I, I feel that I have done something wrong, and I am I, I'm ashamed of what I've done, and I'm asking God to forgive me. That's what it amounts to. I mean, it... it you know, a lot of people have a, 
uh, they call it a twinge of conscience. Mm -hmm. uh, you you uh, commit a crime, you commit uh, adultery, you do something wrong, you cheat on your spouse, and you feel guilty for it. Well, that's conviction of, in your own life, and the Holy Spirit will do the same thing to you. He will bring to you the fact that you are sinful, and then He will bring to you the consciousness that Jesus Christ died for your sins. That's what's so wonderful about it, okay? And it really has to happen to every person when they come to Christ, Every right? person. You, nobody can come to the Lord without, without the drawing of the Holy Spirit, all right? This is Yvonne who says, Pat, I am low income, and my question is, if we get rid of the gasoline cars <laughs> and go electric, how expensive will it be, and how will the low income be able to afford it? What happens to us then? I love my freedom to be able to drive. Well, the, the big thing about these electric cars, they, they, they have proven that they're, they're eight or nine hundred dollars a year cheaper. Uh, not only is the depreciation cheaper, you don't have to have plugs, you don't have to have points, you don't have to have a transmission, you don't have to have all these things that uh, the, the uh, internal combustion engine has. So it's going to be cheaper. That's why they are superior. If, they weren't, if the electrics weren't cheaper, people wouldn't want them. But driving them all the way down the line with what you don't have to put into them uh, and the savings is remarkable. So. Uh, you'll have a wonderful car when the uh, electrics come out. <laughs> and uh, I don't know if you'll get a Tesla or what it'll be, but it'll be a driving experience you'll love, and it'll be a lot cheaper than the internal combustion automobile. Right? This is Sherman, who says, I have two boys and a girl. They constantly insist on denying the existence of demons and evil forces. I've tried everything, but they continue to risk their souls. I'm worried that they won't make it to paradise. Can you please offer some advice? All right. First of all, the fact that your kids don't believe in demons doesn't mean they're not going to heaven. Uh, they've got to believe in Jesus, and that is what is going to save them. You, you're saved because you repent of your sins and you believe that Jesus Christ died for your sins and that He's coming again. That's what you've got to get your kids believing in. The demons and spirits and all that stuff, that, that's, that's all well and good, but that has nothing to do with their salvation. But uh, if they are sensitive to the Holy Spirit, then they'll get them into the Bible and see what Jesus did in relation to demonic spirits, how He he dealt with them because they were real in the Bible, and get them reading the Bible. That's where the the answer is. All right. Exactly. Thank you for Thank your you. answers. Thank, Thank you. Thank you for, for your those questions, questions. everybody. Right. We love hearing from you. Well, still I had 30 years of tremendous pain and five failed surgeries. Doctors told this woman there was nothing more they could do. So how was she healed in her own home? Plus, first responders are America's superheroes, but what happens when a pair of EMTs need help themselves? Who comes to their rescue? Find out, that's coming up. Welcome back to Washington for the CBN News Break. Some California churches opened their doors Sunday after the state revised its guidelines for houses of worship. The reopenings come after a Supreme Court ruling that lifted a ban on indoor services during the coronavirus pandemic. The high court issued rulings in two separate cases where churches argued the restrictions violated their religious liberty. The court said, for now, California cannot continue with its ban on indoor church services but it can limit attendance to 25% of a building's capacity and restrict singing and chanting. Well, to provide resources for children during the COVID-19 pandemic, Superbook hosted a special two-week YouTube live, live stream in Russian and Ukrainian. The 24-hour live stream featured all 26 episodes from Superbook seasons three and four, airing for the first time in these languages online. Children were able to watch Bible stories like The Good Samaritan, The Birth of John the Baptist, Nehemiah, King Solomon, and more. The live broadcast received more than 100,000 views. Well, you can find out more about what CBN is doing around the world by going to cbn.com international. Pat and Terry will be back right after this.
The latest Superbook episode is called Love Your Enemies, and it shows children how to love and that forgiveness can overpower hate and revenge. Seems like something we all should watch, doesn't it? It can be yours when you join the Superbook Club today. For your recurring gift of $25 on a credit or debit card, <clears throat> you'll receive three copies of Love Your Enemies. Then every four weeks, you're going to be among the first to receive a new Superbook episode. Superbook Club members can also stream all episodes of seasons one through five for free. So if you'd like to join now, just call 1-800-700-7000 or you can visit CBN.com. You'll have the privilege of watching these, sharing them with your children, your grandchildren, your neighbors. And at the same time, you'll be helping bring the message of God's love to children around the world. This is the latest episode. It's Love Your Enemies. You want to get a hold of it. Pat? Amen. Well, the first ones on the scene, for 15 years, EMTs Robert and Eddie Rowland risked their lives to save others. Years later, they were physically unable to work. Their power was about to be cut off, and Robert and Eddie needed someone to save them. Saving lives is the biggest reward for first responders as they put others before themselves. If it's a burning house, you run in. That's just what you do. If it's a car upside down in a ditch, you go inside that car and you get that person out. You think about the consequences afterwards. It felt good to be able to give back and help someone out. Robert and Edie Rowland were both EMTs for more than 15 years in North Carolina. They actually met on the job and later married. Over the years, lifting people and heavy objects took a serious toll on their necks and backs. I've had two vertebrae in my neck replaced. I got cadaver's disc, a titanium steel plate, and screws. It's been really hard, really hard, not being able to move certain days, not being able to walk. Unable to keep working as EMTs, they did their best to find different jobs to support their family. But eventually, Robert couldn't work anymore. Then Edie lost her job in retail. We had lights that were getting ready to be cut off, and they couldn't for a few months because of the, the COVID rule. But then if you can't have a job, you can't catch up. Their church and others pitched in to help, but buying food for themselves and their son was still a struggle until Edie met a woman from a church down her block. She told me that they do give away food once in a while. I said, well, here's my number, give me a call. And she did. Operation Blessing provides food to Eastern Star Church, which has multiple monthly distributions. It's something different every time you go. One time we got chicken, one time we got bacon, one time we got ham. It's always something good. It's a chance to help a hurting community and a family that sacrificed so much for it. I'm not used to having people do for me like that. Just really appreciate it. It means a lot. Operation Blessing has been the best thing for us. There's no words to really say how it feels to not have anything. And then you go down there and they load you up. All in all, it's been a blessing every way around. Isn't it great to be able to help people? You know, those people were so deserving. They, they had actually sacrificed their health, their, their health, helping others. They, they were unable to work because they were so crippled because of the service they had made to other people. And here they are. They say, God, what are we going to do? Well, Operation Blessing was there for them. And I'm so thrilled that we can help them. And in your name, we can help them. So what I'd like you to do is just as uh, we were heard earlier, join the 700 Club. It's so easy. It's $20 a month, and you can be a part of helping people all around the world. Because not only is, it up, is the 700 Club on the air and leading people to the Lord by the millions, but we also are there with Operation Blessing to, to uh, help as many as 300 million people around the world who are, they, they don't have enough food, they don't have enough uh, clothing, they don't have enough heat. That they need uh, some kind of medical procedure, we're there for them. And you can be too. So please pick up your telephone and call in. It's 1 800, it's easy to remember, 700 7000. 700 7000. And uh, when you do that, by the way, this is the 
thing we want to give you that I think will be a blessing. I hope so. It's called I Have Walked with the Living God. It's the book of the miracles that led to CBN and led to, led to uh, Regent University and led to Operation Blessing and these other things that you see. And in it, you've got the, uh, a number of, of pictures. Uh, we've got several, well, 30 or so pages of pictures, including me riding horses, if you like horses. <laughs> All Those right. are his favorites. I've, I've got a whole whole <laughs> chapter about horses. All right. Well, can well, I I'm, tell you what Helen said? She wrote in after reading the book and said, I've walked with the living God is a fantastic read. What great history and a beautiful testimony. I love it. Well, I, I hope so. I, yes. And uh, we're, we're going to put that. I'm, I want to get it translated in a number of languages. Because my prayer is that God will use that to change lives. And it will build your faith. So, again... Call in, and this will be our gift to you when you join the 700 Club. All right? Absolutely. Well, five times. That's how often Carol Van Alls went under the knife. Still nothing cured her chronic pain. Doctors told her she had to just learn to live with it. So how was she healed right in her own home? Take a look. Carolyn Van Alls has suffered from hip and knee pain for almost 30 years. As the years went on and my body got older, it was more difficult for me and I had tremendous pain in the past few years. And uh, that's when I went to, was referred to a surgeon and I went through five surgeries to have five joints replaced. Unfortunately, the surgeries weren't entirely successful. But because of her age, doctors told Carolyn there was nothing more that they could do for her. The pain remained in my left knee after the surgery. The doctor said I was just going to have to live with it and take over-the-counter meds. Carolyn used a walker to get around, but her mobility slowly worsened. She had trouble standing and getting enough sleep at night. I would awaken at night if I moved my leg and the pain would wake me up. And it was sharp and uh, very painful, very uncomfortable. I pretty much gave up a social life. I stayed involved with my church, but it was so bad I, I couldn't move around easily. Over-the-counter medicine only helped a little, so Carolyn prayed daily for her healing. And I said, Lord, I hope that you will heal me. And I don't know how it's going to come about or when, but thank you that I can get up today and I can go through my routine and I can be prepared for the day for whatever's coming my way. As a longtime viewer of The 700 Club, Carolyn tries to watch the show every day and especially enjoys the prayer time. And it encourages me to pray more for my family and friends. On February 20th, 2020, Carolyn was faithfully watching The 700 Club when Pat started to pray. Right now, a knee that has been twisted, I believe it's your left knee, and it's been twisted. And right now, the Lord is bringing that knee into, into alignment, and any damage that's been done to the tendons and ligaments is being healed dramatically in Jesus' name. I thought, that's me. And I sat up, and I said, is it really me? I stood up, I walked around, and I thought, oh, this is wonderful. The pain was gone. Carolyn immediately called her daughter to share the good news, but waited a few days before calling the 700 Club. I don't want to be telling everybody if this is not real. I want to make sure it really happened, and it did really happen. Today, Carolyn is active again and eager to spread her good news. She knows the power of God is greater than anything her doctors can tell her. God can do anything and everything, and His Word says that He wants to heal me. The, the healing power of God is for anyone. I don't have to be uh, an important person in government or well-known in ministry or the perfect anything in my neighborhood or to my family. I know that when I pray, God hears my prayers. I sit here and smile by myself <laughs> and get excited and sometimes cry. I think, God, you're so good to me.
Boy, Carolyn's on the money. God is no respecter of persons. And today we want to pray with you and for you Amen. for whatever your needs might be. Listen, folks, today can be your day, and I want it to be your day. So we're going to join together, two of you. Well, let's just pray. Father, I thank you for the miracle power of God. And I thank you with God all things are possible. Oh, my God. There's somebody, is the name Minerva? There, it looks like the, the, there's a lump in your right breast, and uh, uh, it, it's cancer, and God is going to heal it. You'll feel like a burning in that breast. You want to touch it, do so, and God has just healed you in Jesus' name. Terry? Yes, yeah, someone else, you have a chronic issue with your throat, with drainage, and with just being able to speak clearly because you're always having to <clears throat> clear your throat like this. God's healing that for you right now. All of that drainage is drying up, and you're going to be perfectly well in Jesus' name. Uh, uh, Vincent, Vincent is being healed. You, you have a drainage in your ear. You're having a hard time hearing. Your eustachian tube is blocked. And right now, just put your finger into your he e ear in the name of Jesus. Open. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord. Terry? Yeah, and this is, I don't believe this is one person. I believe it's many. In the hour that we live in, so much anxiety, so much that's unknown, so much anger and hostility, and you are impacted by all of it. Today, the breath of heaven is just going to blow through your heart and your mind. Receive the joy of the Lord, which is your strength. In Jesus' name. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving, let much your request be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passes understanding, will keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Lord, touch lives now. Bring healing, and may the power of God descend upon people this very day. Answer their prayer, Lord. Take away their sicknesses and heal them by the power of the, of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen, amen and amen. Please call us. Let us know what happened. We'd love to hear from you. Uh, it's 1-800-700-7000. Today's Power Minute is from Luke 137. For with God, nothing will be impossible. Well, tomorrow, he was the highest paid center in NFL history when he walked away from it all. Well, we'll hear from Jason Brown. But for Terry and all of us, this is Pat Robertson. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.